حسبن الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير اعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللئيم الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة هو والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما بقية الله العظم روحي وارواح العالمين له الفدا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي The system of testing that Allah has in place We are all going through tests Every human being has tests Some people have tests of you know, poverty Some people have tests of wealth Some people are tested by sickness Some people are tested by relationships. Everyone is going through a test. This is a whole system Allah has made. And it's a very designed system. It's not by accident. It's a very well designed system that is full of wisdom. And in that system, sometimes Allah tests us And things happen in that system that are really strange and very hard to believe in. Some of these testings that Allah does are very strange and very hard to believe that Allah, you would do a test like that. And he does it. For example, you know, he has kept shayateen. Demons that are there to work with shaitan, shaitan's children. From uh, jinn and insan, he has uh, appointed the shayateen with every prophet. And for us, we were like, why would you do that for? They are your prophets. They are your messengers. Why did you keep and appoint shayateen to disturb them? Sometimes, you know, you'll see that. First of all, we need to accept that Allah is testing the prophets. You know, that's strange. Why would he do that for? And number two, the shayateen that are appointed to prophets... The weapon, the preferred weapon that they use is the weapon of beauty and attraction. They are testing Ambiya through beauty and through attraction. Yes, words also. Now let me read the ayat for you so you can stop, you know, start thinking of it. Surah An'am, ayat number 112, send the salawats. This ayat says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ أَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنِ We have made for every prophet, we have made an enemy for them. Aduwan. We have made an enemy. And who are these enemies? Shayateen ul inse wal jinn. From human beings and jinn, there are shayateen, and we have made for the ambiya an enemy. Yes, a foe. He says, Yuhi ba'dhum ila ba'dhim. These shayateen, they have a transmission system, a system of communication where they message each other. They do wahi. Wahi here means messaging one another. That's what they do. Imagine this. So these shayateen, they have a system where they can message each and every one of you. 
you know, amongst themselves. So if someone is with you and he's having a problem, so he just, you know, writes on his WhatsApp group and says, hey guys, I'm having a problem misguiding this person. So help me out here. And he is helped by others. So they're all helping each other to do what? To become a test and an enemy for the people on truth. Wow. He says, and what and how do they misguide them? He says, Zuhruf al Qawl with beautiful sayings, speech. Qawl meaning speech. And it's Zuhruf, it's like embellished, beautiful. When they come to you, it's so beautiful when they say something. It's amazing how they talk. Ghururan, which is deceptive. It's speech that is deceptive. That is deception. It's misguiding you. Ghurur means to misguide. I'm just translating this ayat for you. So that you know this. So Allah is saying that these enemies, shayateen, they come to you. They're insan and jinn. And they are beautiful. They look so good. And they speak so good. And they are so attractive. That when you listen to them. They are deceiving you. But you won't know it. You would think that they are guiding you. You would think that they are showing you towards Allah and Ahlul Bayt. But they are indeed misguiding you. Now Allah says, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعُلُوهُ If Allah wanted, He wouldn't have done that. But you know what? I did it. Allah is saying. It's my call. I did it. I put these jinn and insan who are shayateen and working for shaitan and shaitan's army on all of you. I did it. And that's my call. And that's my call. You would be surprised. Wow. Allah, why are you doing this? It's going to become harder for us to find the truth now. Subhanallah. My friends, with a situation like that, Khanum, huh? Agar Misha Kami. Salawats. Actually, they might not know there's a majlis going on here. So that's why. I just wanted to make sure that they know that right, in Farsi. All right. So what happens is this. That when you look at this, when you see this, how big they are, it is very difficult for us to protect ourselves. Let me go a little bit deeper into that. Let me bring a hadith, right, from... Imam Jafar al-Sadiq al salam Now, I shouldn't say this hadith, but I'm going to say it anyway. Right? It's my call. Right? So, this hadith, right? Imam Sadiq is saying that Allah has made amongst us our relatives and our close Shias, not Far Shias, our close Shias. Shias who are close to us and uh, relatives that are close to us. Meaning from the family of the Imams. Meaning their brothers. Amongst them, Allah has made these people uh, to grow in respect, in status. You know how we, for example... When we look at someone to know that they come from a great background, we say, oh, he is the son of so-and-so, or he is the brother of so-and-so, right? Isn't that how we judge people? We say that this is a son of, he belongs to this family. You know, I don't know, from Najaf. And whatever the case is, Imam is saying this. That amongst us, people gain respect because of their closeness to us. 
They gain respect in the eyes of people. They become attractive to the people. People then look at them with respect and honor. And they give them a high place in society, high status in society. And then when they gain that high status, when they gain the respect of the people, then they turn and backstab us, Ahlul Bayt. They backstab us. They turn against us and they try to destroy what we had established. Friends, not outsiders, not here and there, no. The family of Ahlul Bayt, he's saying, our family, not the Imams, obviously they're Masum, they need to guide. But their family, he says, do, I mean, really, look at this, they are going to misguide you. Because they will become such. Those Shias who are close to us, they will misguide you. And they will work for shaitan. Subhanallah, now you're looking at this and saying, okay, who do we trust now? Really, who do we trust? You think misguidance is going to come from the guy, you know, you know, who doesn't practice Islam? They don't misguide you. Really, they don't misguide you. Like we're all afraid of them. You know, that this guy, he doesn't believe. You think that you're going to be misguided by an unbeliever? No. That's not who's going to misguide you. Someone's going to misguide you who is respectable in your eyes. Who you look up to. Who has gained a status. Yes. I'll give an example from history then. Inshallah I'll explain this. Because it's a very important part. And you know how they misguide you? They are going to be attractive. They are going to be beautiful. In a good sense. They will bring that beauty that they have. Of whatever. Of knowledge. Knowledge is beautiful. And hence they will bring knowledge to you. And you will be like wowed by them. Or speaking. As Allah says. Zukhruf al They will be beautiful speakers. Who will be popular. And they'll come to you. And they will be the source of your misguidance. Working against Ahlul Bayt. Backstabbing them. To what Ahlul Bayt have said. Imam is saying this. Wow. Subhanallah. You know, in the time of Imam Baqir alayhi salam. His, who was the source of misguidance? Who was the one that was pulling the Shias of Ahlul Bayt away from Imam Baqir? You know what that person in terms of his beauty and attraction, was much more handsome than Imam Baqir. He was much more handsome than him. He had better looks. He was known to be more courageous. Who was it? I mean, look at this and see this. Why is it that Imam Baqir was left with only a few people who are following amongst the Shias? From the time of Imam Hussain and Imam Zain al Abidin, when Imam Bakr came about, you see, most of the Shias had left him. Where did they go? They went to his brother Zayd. Yes, Zayd was half the age of Imam Bakr. Zayd is the son of Imam Zain al Abidin, half the age of Imam Bakr. He is the one who stood up against. Bani Umayyah. Shias looked at his courage. They looked at his daringness. They looked at his beautiful attraction. And they said this has to be the real Imam. He has to be the real Imam. This is Imam Bakr's time we are talking about. And Imam Bakr is Masum. My friends, testing when Allah does it. It's very hard. Very difficult. You don't know how difficult it is. If you think it's easy, then you're already 
gone. Shaitan has already got you. And you are khush khayal, you know. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> mashallah, I'm on my way, this and that. Shaitan's already got you. What are you doing? This is not easy, especially in Akhir Zaman. Especially now, Akhir Zaman, children means the end times. Akhir Zaman means the end times. Meaning the last time before the zuhur of our imam. Before our imam comes back, this is known as Akhir Zaman. All right. So uh, as the alarm is going off, that's all right. Uh, we'll use this time. Uh, if you all can move forward, really get inside because a lot of people are going to come right now in the next 15 minutes. And also the ladies, if you all can come forward, otherwise everyone has to walk through you all. So you can come all the way to the front, please. Send a loud salawat. <laughs> yes, ladies, if you all can make that effort, you know, while this is going on. It's a white minivan, whoever's it is. White minivan. It's a Honda minivan. So anyone who has a Honda minivan, please go and uh, make sure that the alarm is turned off. All right, very good. Salawats. All right, still going on. Don't worry about it. All right. Uh, so the method... That is used that Imam Saad explaining. At first they gained status. At first they gained respect of Mumini. People have it. My friends, this has happened in a lot of places. I'll give you some examples for you. Right? That you should know this. Right? As to what and how it happens. Many people I have seen. And we have examples of it in America. Where people have come to the masjid. Shias. To a Shia center. And you will see that they will give big donations and become a, you know, like everyone is like, mashallah, he's such a great brother, blah, blah, blah. he gives big donations and he's like this and he's like that. They do that. And after they do it, after they gain that respect, it happened in America. I know of three masjids in America. When they do that, then they will come amongst the people and say, hey, listen, if you want to invest money, we'll make money for you. You want to invest money, we'll make money for you. This brother, mashallah, now he's on the board also, whatever, this and that. He has gained respect now. And then once that happened, that he came there and everyone started investing, because hey, mashallah, he's such a good brother, this and that, that's it. They took that money and all that money, they wrote it off as a loss and the life savings of mu'mineen was destroyed. In these communities here in America. My friends, no one comes all of a sudden and says, hey, listen, you want to invest. No, first they build their you know, character in front of you. They build this thing. And if you see someone, you know, really trying to be like holy and this and that all of a sudden. Then you should be like, okay, big <laughs> question mark. Why do you want to create this image for yourself? Really, why are you making this image for yourself? Be smart about it. And this happens. I'm just giving this example so that you know misguidance, harm that comes about. This was just dunya. They lost their dunya. Many people lost their dunya because they uh, worked hard all their life to save up money. And you know what? They thought that this would be a way, you know, for them to make, you know, money and mashallah, you know, they'll, and that's it. Friends, be careful of anyone like that. Imam is saying these people, they come and they make a reputation for themselves right away. And then they're like, hey, you know what? I do this. Look at me. I made so much money. I'll make it for you also. So these are things that a mu'min should be aware of. But there's so much more misguidance than that. Here, at least people lost their dunya. But a lot of times they lose their akhirat also. Let's talk about that. Send the salawats. <laughs> akhirat zaman is very difficult, my friends. This times that we're living in, it is, there's so much hadith regarding this as to how hard this is. It is said that a mu'min, a Shia, who leaves his house in the morning 
by the time he comes back home he will sell his deen to shaitan many times it will be so hard for you to save your deen just in one day's time this is how hard it is so now how what do we have to do i'll just say a few things right now for you to understand this oh first thing you need to know the truth is clear the truth is clear imam sadiq he was inside a tent in hajj they were in the khaime in the tent and there were some people imam sadiq was speaking about akhir zaman and how difficult it's going to be in akhir zaman he was speaking about that and then what happened is that they asked him so how will we know the truth at that time imam sadiq pulled the curtain and the sunlight came in he says do you see the sunlight he says yes are you sure this is sunlight they said yes we are sure this is sunlight he says just like the sunlight is so clear the truth will also be clear in akhir zaman if you haven't been misguided if you haven't been misguided by sweet talk and good speakers you know zaid was a much better speaker than imam bakr when he used to speak people used to be like all in it people used to be all in it you know the imams you know when they used to speak they weren't about making the people excited you know that right if you listen to the khutbahs of imam ali or the speeches of imam ali you see that imam ali would never speak uh for entertainment never look at his speeches you will be like shaking oh my god what is he saying he is like you know torturing us he wouldn't let go also he would make sure that you are shaking by the time it's done and crying and going back and saying we need to change our lives that's how imam ali was all the imams were like this no one came to entertain you So when did we got this habit that we are here for entertainment that the majalis are for entertainment that we enjoying this uh, because the those who are speaking are not speaking for Allah or Ahl al-Bayt they're speaking for you to get your pleasure they're not getting the pleasure of Allah or Ahl al-Bayt if they were speaking for Allah's sake or Ahl al-Bayt's sake it would be different it will be different when they speak and understand these things otherwise it's easy for you to be misguided how these people gain respect by this talk that they have zukhruf al qaul allah says in the quran salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad okay my friends that's it now regarding shaitan i will say something right all right uh Okay there's a silver honda odyssey everyone silver honda odyssey does it belong to anyone here silver honda from uh with uh, like missouri plates no, no it stops and then turns on if it's not stopped it'll stop and turn on so ye honda odyssey has ke in saro sada dare me kore so if <laughs> okay everyone so uh you know shaitan worshiped allah for a long time right it's like 6000 years he worshiped allah at the end when allah you know when he lost his place and allah says get out of here shaitan came to allah to make a deal He said Allah listen I worshiped you a long time I think that's worth something right and I want something in return for that So Allah says all right go ahead what do you want in return for that What do you want in return for that He says I want a long life I want a long life anzini la yawm yubathun Give me a long life Allah says granted You got the long life. Okay. Allah says anything else? You want anything else? He says, "Ya Allah, for every child that is born to Adam, I want two children. 
every child that is born in human beings, I want two children for me. Allah says, granted. When Allah says, shayateen, these are the children of shaitan. And for every one human being, there are two of them. They are born with them. Two children shaitan has for every child of Adam. Allah says, granted, so be it. Subhanallah. Brothers and sisters, there's a child inside there. In the car. There's a child in the car. Yes, you know, if you can go downstairs and announce it, please. The child in the car trying to get out, that's why the alarm is going. Subhanallah. Inshallah. All right, send a salawat, please. La ilaha illallah. Astaghfirullah. All right, inshallah, you know, let's get your attention back. There are people who are taking care of it. So inshallah, they will take it out. Don't worry. All right, then. Uh, let's start off with another salawat. So, shaitan is... Now you all can come back to me now. It's all right. Don't worry. There are people who are taking care of it. Inshallah, come back. Uh, shaitan, when he was making a deal, so he said, I want two children for each child that Adam has. Allah says, granted. Then he says, listen to this, what he says, and what he has, the power he has. He says, I want to be inside of human beings like the blood in their veins. Like the blood that's in your veins, shaitan says, I want to be inside of them like that. That I'm inside them and they shouldn't know that I'm inside them. Allah says, granted. You got it. And then you know what? Obviously, this is shaitan. He knows Allah. He knows Allah. He knows who Allah is. And then he says, Allah, these things I'm asking you, don't give it because of me. Give it out of your generosity. Give it to me because you are God and you are generous. Give it to me like that. So you know what Allah said? Allah says, granted. I will make you such that when you are inside of people and when you talk to them, they won't know that it's you who's talking. They will think that it's their idea. Yes. My friends, when shaitan speaks, Allah has given him this power that you don't know. You don't know what will happen. That it is from him or yourself. Shaitan has made it such. And this is the way it is. La ilaha illallah. You know, if shaitan is this strong, and that's the question that many people have. If shaitan is that strong, what do we do? My friends, now you know how he is, what he has, what powers he has. Now you know what he does. Now understand what Allah is doing. Allah made shaitan strong. Allah made shayateen strong. Imagine how much trust does Allah have on the love of Ahlul Bayt. He says to Shaitan, go and do what you want. Whoever will follow will follow you. I have no fear. You cannot misguide my servants. Allah, what is it that's holding them back from all of this that you're giving Shaitan? He says, I have Ahlul Bayt with you. Yes. Subhanallah. It's not easy. You know, Imam Ali alayhi salam was, salam. was walking down the street and he saw uh, some people, you know, like Makkah, you know, they were like talking with each other, Quraysh. And as soon as they saw Imam Ali, you know, they 
lowered their voice. They didn't want Imam Ali to come to them. They were ignoring him. They were ignoring him. Imam Ali felt bad. That, you know, I mean, wow, look at how they are treating me. So Imam Ali went to Rasulullah. He went to Rasulullah and complained. And said, Ya Rasulullah, it is for Allah's sake that I did jihad. It is for Allah's pleasure and in that jihad that I killed many people. And now because of that, many people hate me. Many Muslims, they hate me. Why? Because their relatives were killed by Imam Ali. They hate me. Really. Even Rasulullah once, you know what he did? He was like speaking. He was like speaking uh, in a masjid. Right? And he was about to start his prayer. People, right? Uh, they saw Imam Ali coming. And they closed the line so Imam Ali doesn't join the saf. Rasulullah cried. He says, this is how they're behaving in front of me, eh, with my Ahlul Bayt, in front of me. Imagine what will happen after me. Friends, it was there. But when Imam Ali complained to Rasulullah and said, I've killed many people in jihad for Allah's sake, but now these people hate me. So this ayat was sent down by Allah. This ayat came down from Allah. He says, Inna ladina." آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سيجعل لهم الرحمن ودا. This ayat is about Imam Ali, and it is said, it was said to Imam Ali that those who believe and do good things, which is Imam Ali, that Allah will create love for him. Allah will create love for him. In the hearts of mu'mineen. Those who have iman from now on. Those who have iman will love you. That's it. My friends. This is something amazing. He gave that to Imam Ali. He says now you go there. Now mu'mineen will love you. Only they will love you. That's it. Subhanallah. This ayat is in the Quran. Akhir zaman is very hard, my friends. People are going to make up things that will make you like amazed. Even in the time of Rasulullah. You know, once Rasulullah in a battle lost his camel. Rasulullah lost his camel. You know, there's a lot of camels and a lot of soldiers and all these things. He lost his camel. Camel went somewhere. He lost it. So he was looking for the camel. He was looking for the camel, asking people, did you see my camel? It's like that. You see my camel? No. He was looking for the camel. And you know what these people started to say? Voice was that, look at him. He can't even find his camel and he wants to lead us to Jannat. Shayateen. This is Shayateen. You know, they will raise it and it will be like, you know, a lot of people are thinking now. Yeah, you know, he has a point. So, <laughs> see how shaitan misguides, my friend. See how it misguides. You know, I can give you other examples, you know, but time is running out. So I just want to reach this one point and that's it for today. Misguidance is through beauty. Shaitan uses that. Allah has made it. Sometimes Allah himself adds to it. When Musa was gone, they made the cow. The cow was beautiful. It was made of gold. It was beautiful. It was attractive. And then you know what? The cow was making this noise also. The cow was making this noise that really made people misguided. Really made people misguided. So Musa, you know, he came to Allah and said, Allah, I understand the gold. I understand the attraction of the cow and I understand the idol worship. But where did this noise come from? How did the cow make the noise? Where did that come from? Allah says, oh, that was me. I was making the noise for the cow. 
so that the test can be raised. The level of the test can be raised. I do that. That's what I do. Allah does that. And in Akhirah Zaman, Shaitan will use all of his tricks. He would have, he's going to bring his A game to all of you to misguide you. And it's going to come. And that's why you have to be very careful. How can I warn you about this? Tomorrow is Ashura, inshallah. There's a lot to learn from Imam Hussein. How can I warn you that you want to be saved? Don't think it's light what I'm saying. Imams didn't say it lightly. It's very difficult. The people who are going to misguide you are the very people that you're going to respect because they're sitting on the member. They're wearing a mama. They have long white beards. These are the very people that shaitan has made to misguide you. How are you going to know the difference? Think a little bit. Take it seriously. You know, normal people are not going to misguide you. It will be people who are going to have that respect and status of respect. And amongst the Shias, the only one who have that status of respect is people who wear amama. People who are ulama. You think that shaitan is not going to come in that route now? He's going to put amama and Aba on the head of his army. And make them come to you. That's it. What? How open can I be? That Imam Sadiq is saying. Not me. You know what I'm He's saying, amongst us, the most close Shias, those who are ulama, you see, even the, the, the representatives of our Imam, from Imam Musa Qasim downwards, how many of them stole the money of the Imam? Appointed by the Imam, they stole the money and ran away. These are the representatives of our Imams. <laughs> the ones that Imam appointed. And they became the agents of shaitan. How many examples are there? This is very, well, my friends, this is not easy. I'm sorry, it's not going to be easy. You are the Shia of Ahlul Bayt. Ya Allah, it's very hard. It's very hard. But you know what? Let me give you a gift before I go. I'll give you a gift before I go. You know, um, when this ayat came down, and there's an ayat that says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. He says, my servants, ayat says, my servants, he, Allah is talking to shaitan and saying, you don't have any power over them. You don't have any sway over them. Over my servants, ibadi. My ibad, my servants. You have no sway over them. Okay, Imam Sadiq says that these, these are laysa ala hadhil isaba Khasa Sultan. Imam Sadiq says that this group of people Allah is talking about are our Shias. Are our Shia. And the person who heard that, he said, but Mawla, I mean, how can that be? You know, the Shias, they do all kinds of wrong. They do sins, they do bad things. They do all of these things. Right? They do bad things and all these things. So how is it possible that they will not be influenced by shaitan? That they will not be hurt by shaitan? How is that possible? You know, then Imam explains this. He says that shaitan, oh yes, he will make them do sin and this and that. But they will never love kufr and they will never hate iman. In other words, they will never hate Ahlul Bayt and they will never love the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. They will never go to any Shia and see. Any Shia in the world and see. Are you ready to hate Imam Ali? Ask any Shia. Are you ready to love the enemies of Ahlul Bayt? I mean, Anishia, go and ask them. 
See where their heart is. And you'll see, this is what he's saying, shaitan will never make them do that. And that's why they'll be protected. Yes. You know, shaitan has a lot of attraction. He has made shayateen for you. He has made all of these things and these power that is there. But you know what? Allah says it doesn't matter. You can't misguide them. You know why? Because I have given them something that is going to protect them. And that something is called Hussein ibn Ali. Yes, my friends. Understand how powerful Imam Hussein is. Allah has itmanan. Shaitan, you can do whatever you want. Hussein is here. And what Hussein does, doesn't go backwards. Doesn't backfire, doesn't get lost. My friends, that's it. I'll end fast because we are out of time. That's it. This is what you need to recognize. Imam Hussein on Ashura, really on Ashura, I mean, he asked for this night, this one night, the ninth, because the army had made its first attack and he sent Hazrat Abbas to go and ask for this night place. Say that Hussein wants to read Quran. Hussein wants to read Quran. So give me this one night to read Quran. And they give him the night. Subhanallah. So much happened on this night. I'm going to make it short for you. Just one, two things I'll mention that happened this night. You know, Imam Hussein obviously took the oath from all the people. He, he lifted his bayat from all the people and said, you don't need to fight for me. You can take my family and this and that. When he met the companions, he said all of that. And as he, after they all promised that they will be with Imam Hussain and they all gave their words that they will be with Imam Hussain, Imam Hussain at that point said, all right, don't worry. Very good. He left that tent. He left the tent and he went back to the tent of his family. Burair was escorting Imam Hussain to the tent of his family. And when Imam Hussain told Burair that, all right, fine, I'm going inside. He went inside the tent. As soon as he went inside the tent, Zainab met Imam Hussain. She asked Imam Hussain that, are you sure your companions are not going to run away? She just asked this question. Are you sure they're not going to run away and abandon you? You know, Burair heard that outside. When he heard that outside, it just broke him. He came back to the tent where the companions were now sitting. And he said, Habib, Habib, the daughter of Fatima has doubts in her faith. The daughter of Fatima has doubt in her faith. La ilaha illallah. Has doubt in her faith. So they went. When they went, they said, we need to do something. So they all got together. Habib says, come together. I know what to do. He asked everyone to come together. Abbas came and said, what's going on? They said, Abbas, this is not your problem. You go away. This is about us. They went to the tent of Hussein and said, Hussein, please come outside. Hussein came outside and said, what happened? I just left you all here. I left you all here. What happened? He says, we heard that your family has doubts about her faith. So we want to talk to them to make sure that they know that we are with you and that we will not leave you. So they said, please call your sister to come to the... When Bibi Zainab came and these people wanted to say something, Hussein said, just wait one minute, wait one minute. Would you please also call Sakina to come? <laughs> Sakina, you also come in here, what they have to say. <laughs> they came there and they stood behind the tent, behind the door of the tent. And these men came out and said that if you have doubt in us, if you have doubt in us, we are taking out our swords, putting it on our neck and we will Cut our heads off right now to show that we are with Hussein. 
They said that right now. <laughs> you know what? Bibi saying up, she became, she calmed down. The ladies calmed down knowing they're with them. But what can I say? This is the last time these ladies had met people who have decency, who talk to them from behind hijab. <laughs> From now on, Zainab's not going to meet any men like this. <laughs> they will not come across men like this. And this is what happened. They stood for what they promised. Hussein was there. Hussein stood up. And when Hussein saw them afterwards, it came to a point when everyone is dead. When everyone died, even Abbas is gone. Hussein went to make his one last talk. He said, to, he called out to the people. He said, Hal min nasir and yansurana. Is there anyone who would help me? And no one, no one replied. They all laughed at Hussein. But the ladies started crying loud from the tent. Hussein said, what's the matter? He came there, looked at them. Why are you making noise? I just told you not to make noise. Why are you making noise? Hussein, when you made, you, when you said, Halmin Nasirin, your son Ali Azgar fell off his cradle. <laughs> started crying. Hussein knew what has to be done. He took Ali Asghar. As soon as he came in his father's hand, he became quiet. He became quiet. Hussein knew he has to ask for water. So he took him from under his Abba and then he took him outside. As he took him outside, he came in front of the army. They looked at him. Everyone is talking now. What's Hussein trying to do? What trick does he have of his sleeve? Then he exposed Ali Azgar to the people. They saw this little child, six months old. Hussein said that uh, if you have a problem with me, with the elders, then I don't care. But this child, you shouldn't have a problem with this child. This child, take this child and give some water to him. He pleaded for water. He even said, Don't you see how he's whimpering away? You know what that means? It means, you know, like when a fish is taken out of water, when you take a fish out of water, there are three stages of its death. First stage is the she, the fish jumps up and down because it has energy. Then the fish turns. The second stage is the fish turns to the right and left. You will see this as a fish is dying. And then after it loses its energy, the last thing the fish does uh, asking for water is that it opens its mouth and tries to gasp breath. Tries to take the air inside. Hussein is saying, my Asghar has reached that stage. He can't talk anymore. He's gasping for breath. He's gasping for moisture. <laughs> and then when they didn't listen to him, he said, I will put him down. I will put him down. And then you take care of him. Take care of him and give it back to me. They didn't listen. At the end, he just told Ali Asghar, Asghar, I have made all my pleas if you want to talk to them. Asghar smiled, <laughs> put his lips outside, put his tongue outside his lips. Men who saw that, they were arguing with each other. Some of them were saying, give him water. Some were saying, no, this is Hussein's trick. Don't give him water. As this argument was going on, Umar ibn Saad called Hormala. He said, Ikta kalam al Hussein. Cut the speech of Hussein. <laughs> Cut the speech of Hussein. Hormala. <laughs> came up and he put out his arrow. He had an arrow, a three-pronged arrow that is used for animals with thick hide. When those have thick hide, you use it for that. He took that arrow out, aimed it at that child. And he said, what should I aim? What should I aim at? Should I aim at the father or should I aim at the kid? <laughs> Umar ibn Saad said, aim for the whiteness on his neck. You see the whiteness that's on the neck? Aim for that. He aimed and he shot the arrow. When the arrow came, it went through Ali Asghar so fast <laughs> that Ali Asghar's head was now hanging by the skin. <laughs> Hussein looked at that. 
He saw the blood coming out. He cupped that blood in his hand. My friends, how much blood does a six month old have? <laughs> how much blood does Elias girl have? This baby, this baby that's died on Hussein's hand. He takes that blood, wants to throw it on the ground. The ground calls out to Hussein and says, Hussein, don't do that, Hussein. Otherwise, the ground will die. He wants to throw it in the air. The sky calls and says, Hussein, don't do that. The sky will be dried forever. Hussein took that blood in his hand and smeared it on his face. <laughs> he smeared it on his face. My friend, Hussein is a father. This is a baby that's in his hand. You got disturbed by the baby in the car. Look at Hussein. This is Hussein who's holding his baby. An arrow on his neck. Hussein wants to take it back to Rabab. How can he take it back to a mother? How can the mother see this child? Hussein's going back and forth. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It is an bekazai wa taslim al amrik. Goes back and forth until he comes to the tent of Rabab. How can he show it to Rabab? He pulls the curtain. Rabab thinks that the child must have been felled. It's not making noise anymore. And then when Hussein unfolds that Abba, he see he, Abba sees Ali Asghar. When she sees Ali Asghar, she notices that it's cut off from the body. He says, do they kill babies in war? <laughs> <laughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad